What's up guys? In this video, I wanna go over how to break down and understand transformation in the easiest way possible. And if you look at this equation, you're probably like, this guy is full of it. That looks completely confusing. Where are you going with this? Well, where I'm going with this is understanding a house. If you can understand a house and understand two little people, then guess what? That's all I really want you to know about this video. This is what we're going to use to understand what it is I wrote up here. So we have a house and we have two people. One person is outside and one person is going to be inside the house, right? And it's pretty straightforward. We can all relate to and understand if something is outside the house as well as something's inside the house. Now, I understand this is about transformations as well as about functions. So we're not going to have an actual house in these problems. But what I want you to do is think about this house as a metaphor for our functions. So these are going to be my four basic functions that I want to talk about with you and see the differences of their houses, right? Because we all know like houses are built differently. Like, yeah, we know we have builders that build a subdivision. They're all kind of the same, right? But there are variations of how people interior decorate or how they do their landscaping, right? There's different changes. You might say this is a certain style or the same floor plan, but we know from building to building based on the people that live inside the house, the outside and the inside are going to look differently. Now, what are we talking about with this A, B, C, and D? And how is this relating anything to dealing with an outside and an inside? What we need to think about is think of the functions as the house. And when we're thinking about transformations, we want to identify are, are those people inside or outside the house? Because if they're outside, they're working on the landscaping. If they're inside, they're working on the interior decorations, right? So how does each of these functions differ when our operations are outside or inside? Okay, so these are gonna be all the functions based on with their transformations. Now, I'll get to why it's important actually about the inside outside. We're not just talking about landscape and interior decorating, but what is important about the transformations if actually we want to apply these or use real numbers to understand our transformations. So the first thing though I want you to see, I have my function x squared. I want you to see that A and B represent outside transformations. A and D, I'm sorry, B, D, not B. A and D are outside of the square root. The square root is the house, right? You can kind of even think about that as the house. What's inside the parentheses is the house. Over here, the exponent, the power is going to be the house. My A and my D are outside. Over here, it's going to be that the rational expression is my A and my D are again are outside the house. So what is so important about A and D being outside the house? Well, remember, that's the landscaping, right? Your A and D are gonna be what we call are vertical transformations. And what do I mean by that? Well, A, it doesn't matter what the function is. I don't care what this graph looks like. That's the square root graph. That's the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the quadratic graph, the square root. This is the exponential, and that is going to be the reciprocal graph. I don't care what the graph looks like. A is always going to vertically stretch or compress the graph. If A is negative, it's going to vertically reflect the graph across the X axis. That is what A is going to do. It doesn't matter if it's this one, this one, this one, or this one, or any other function that you have to do. D is always going to be shifting the graph up or down. If D is positive, you're gonna shift it up. If D is negative, you're going to go ahead and shift it down. So now let's look at, well, what about the B and the C? Now again, notice there's some similarities here. Uh, we don't have a B, so we'll go from there. Notice how A was multiplied, whereas D was added. B is multiplied, whereas C is going to be subtracted. So if you think about this, B has the same operation as A. It's now inside the house, so the operations are going to be different. This one is a horizontal, horizontal transformations. That's gonna be a horizontal stretch or compression, or a horizontal reflection, which would be a reflection about the y-axis. C is going to be a shift left or right. The negative actually means it's going to be the opposite direction. So if I'm adding C, that means I'm actually moving to the left. If I'm subtracting C, that actually means I'm moving to the right. But again, just like D, it's a shift left or right. Now you might be thinking over here, Ms. McClogan, what happened to the B? Well, here's the important thing. This graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. 
This is what we call a even function. That's important. A lot of times we don't even consider b when we're learning how to graph quadratics because what does it matter if the graph is reflected about the y-axis? It's an even function, ladies and gentlemen, so you're always gonna get the exact same graph. So a lot of times we don't even talk about b until we get to these other functions. It's important for the square root and the exponential because these are neither even nor odd functions. They can be, if they're reflected about the x or the y-axis or the origin, you're always gonna get a different graph. But what's special about this graph? This graph is reflected about the origin, therefore it's odd. If I reflect this about the x as well as the y-axis, I get the exact same graph. So what that means is if I reflect this about the x-axis or I reflect this about the y-axis, I'm gonna get the exact same graph. So A can actually be thought of as like B in the same scenario. So what I mean by that is what if I had a one over a B times x minus C? What if I did put a B in front of there? Well, couldn't I also rewrite that as a one over B times a x minus C? I'm sorry, one over x minus C? Yeah, you can extract that B and now it's outside the function, so now it's represented as A, but it's just in fractional form. So in this case, you can think of that as a porch. But hopefully, if you are struggling with understanding transformations, you're understanding, struggling when you're looking at a notation like this, or how this notation applies to all these different functions, just understand the differences between your outside operations and your inside operations. Because then, it doesn't matter what function you have, you're still going to apply the exact same thing. Hopefully this video was helpful.